before starting your Voyager 2, 3, or 4, check the oil level in the high pressure compressor. The oil level is shown here. This could use a little bit of oil, but is right in the middle. So you're good to go, and you can go ahead and start the compressors. You'll notice that it also has a low oil indicator. So if you had low oil, it would shut down the unit. There may be a little bit of pressure under the cap as you remove it. After removing the dipstick, make sure that the oil level reads properly. You should have your oil level three quarters of the way up on the hash marks. Be sure to put the dipstick back in straight and not on an angle because there are parts in there that you can hit. The high temp device is connected to the fourth stage here and if you follow the line you can see that there's a plug here. If you ever needed to bypass the high temp you could disconnect the plug and then put a jumper between the two lines <clears throat> to make the connection. Please consider that the voltage is probably live the whole time. Your Voyager 2, 3, or 4 has a rotary screw compressor. The rotary screw compressor produces the low pressure air where it goes through the refrigerator dryer, through your low pressure filtration, into your heater where your thermostat controller tells the heater to turn on and off based on the temperature and also how much pressure is coming into it. So you have to have a minimum of 80 PSI for the heater to activate. There it comes out of your heater into the top of your membrane. Most of the air goes through the membrane such as the nitrogen comes out the end on a fixed discharge. The nitrox comes out of this port on the membrane into your mixing tube. Air from the atmosphere is mixed through here and then the air comes by your sensor here which is read on your permeant O2 analyzer located here and then goes into your high pressure compressor through your high pressure filtration located on the side of your uh, Voyager 2, 3, or 4. The air comes out of your filtration tower here. If you needed to change your filters, you would turn off your unit, bleed all the manual drains, and open the drain here. Then, once all the air was drained out of your filtration, you would put a wrench between these two bolts and turn counterclockwise. You'll notice that there's two different filter numbers, an X65247 and an X65677. So after checking your oil on your high pressure and your low pressure compressor, you can calibrate your fill O2 analyzer. The easiest way to, fill, to check your uh, O2 analyzer and calibrate it is to remove the cap and just wave your hand in front of it and calibrate it to 20.9. The Voyager 2, 3, and 4 is divided up into two sections, your high pressure compressor from here over and your low pressure compressor from the, left, from the center to the left. Your control for turning on the high pressure is here and your low pressure here. Your Permia O2 will be calibrated by turning on your high pressure compressor. You'll adjust your O2 percentage up to 40% with this knob right here. Your LP pressure will come up after about a minute and a half of runtime, and your cabinet temperature, your heater temperature refers to the heater temperature on the membrane. Your oil temperature here refers to your rotary screw oil temperature. Your oil pressure for your high pressure is here. First stage, second stage, third stage, and final stage on your high pressure compressor, and your fill pressure. So we'll go ahead and we'll start the high pressure, and then we'll calibrate our permeant. As soon as the compressor starts, you can go ahead and calibrate the 20.9. Now that I've calibrated 20.9, I can start my low pressure compressor. This gauge here will start to come up as the compressor cycles into its run mode. Starts building pressure, we'll see the percentage change. 
Right now we have the air escaping from a fill whip. You may have a bank system, so the air needs to escape from your yokes before charging your tank. So let the air escape from your fill yoke, and as the air comes through the tower, eventually the 21% that was in the tower will be displaced by the 40. When both of your probes and analyzers read 40 and 40, then you know you're ready to close the uh, valves and fill your tanks. If you decide to change your percentage, you'll need to wait until the air moves through the tower by bleeding the air once again at the fill yoke. If you want to pump regular air, you would just turn your low pressure compressor off. When you, as soon as you turn your low pressure compressor off, you'll see your, your Fermi pressure, or your Fermi O2, drop. And if you want to turn the high pressure compressor off, you can turn your high pressure compressor off. You'll notice that the machine is still running on the low pressure side. It takes about a minute or two for the compressor to cycle down. Eventually it will turn off. To change your oil, you'd cut the wire tie here, remove the cap nut, find a pan to drain your oil into to dispose of properly, open your ball valve and drain the oil. Your air oil separator is located here. You also have another filter back there. You also have a filter inside the block here. This filter will be changed at 2000 hours. Your membrane is located underneath the top frame. Your low pressure filters are located below the membrane against the front panel. To access your low pressure filters, you'll have to remove the lower front face cover using Allen heads. Be sure to check rotation on your high pressure compressor when initially installing the unit. If you ever make any wiring changes to your electrical panel, check the rotation again. The compressor should go clockwise when you're on the front side probably easier to look from the back side to see if the rotation is correct. There's a rotation sticker on the back side of the Voyager 2, 3, and 4 to indicate which way the fan should go. If you look in while someone bump starts the machine by starting it and then turning it off right away, you can see which way the fans go to be sure that you have the correct rotation.